Hey everyone and welcome to another video. In the previous video, we looked at how you can build your first AI agent using the Google Agent Development Kit. In this particular video, we are moving to something else. We are going to look at what are tools and how can agents use tools to enhance their response or to access more data even. So let's quickly talk about what a tool is. A tool is something like a Python function or something that's built in with the Google Agent Development Kit that your AI agent can call. So once the user basically asks a question, it essentially goes through the large language model first. The large language model decides which tool to call based on the question. And you can say the tool is like a Python function call. So let's say we had a function that gives you the current date and time in a specific format. The large language model will process the question from the user and will see if it needs to use the tool. If that's the case, then it essentially does the function call or calls the tool itself. After the tool responds, the framework or the agent development kit basically passes that to the large language model to summarize it and then it essentially sends the response back to the user. That's how the whole process works. Now you can use these tools for various use cases. For example, you could use them for querying databases. You can make API requests. You can search the web. As you saw in the previous video where we built a marketing campaign agent, it used for the market research the search tool built into the agent development kit. So you could essentially use it for searching the web via Google search or other search tools as well. It could also be used for working with retrieval augmented generation or RAG. And we are going to have a video on that as well in this series. Finally, it can also interact with other softwares, tools. It can also save things to file system, etc. Essentially, you can imagine doing anything that a Python function allows you to do. Now, a quick look into what kind of functions do we have? We do have function tools that we can create as custom functions. We can also use agents as tools as well. We're going to see that in one of the upcoming videos as well. And we can also have a long running function as well. We're going to look at that later on as well. And then we have built in tools like Google search, code execution and retrieval augmented generation already built into the agent development kit that we can use. However, of course, they are only usable by the Google model. So if we are using the light LLM with something other or other providers, we're not going to be able to use these built in tools. And we can, of course, use things like Crew AI or Langchain tools as third party tools as well. Now, without having a lot of other mumbo jumbo, let's actually get into coding stuff. So if you already have seen the first video, you already are familiar with the code base. If not, you can find the link in the description of this video and you can clone the Git repository. Once you do so, you need to go to the function tools branch that you can see right here, because that is what you can follow along with this particular video. So once you're here, you can quickly open that into your editor. I'm going to open that in NVIM. And then the first thing I want to do actually is to rename this folder because we are going to create multiple agents. It's just better to rename them at the moment. So I'm going to call this one one dash marketing campaign agent. And then I'm also going to create two dash tools underscore agent. And this is going to be a folder inside that we are going to create some files. So we are going to create underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py and then also we are going to create another file named agent dot py just like before now you may already know that we had an environment variable file so if i go here and shift to show hidden files here you can see that we have this env file as an example so we need to have our google api key here we need to specify a gen ai model you can also hard code this in the file as well if you're not using the environment variables but these two are actually read by the google agent development kit so you need to provide the api key and also the google then I use Vertex CI. Well, I already had that before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially copy the ENV file from my first folder to my second folder. So it should be somewhat here. So I'm going to copy the ENV file from here to here. And once I run this, I can actually see that the ENV file doesn't really exist. That's interesting. If I do a git status, I should be able to see that here are the files that I've moved because of the renaming of the folder. So if I go inside the first folder and if I do LS LATR, I cannot see my ENV file here. So I'm quickly going to create it. So let's quickly do copy and here we can say env example and to env. All right, so let's have a look at the files here. So I do have env example here, but I should also have the env file. Let's quickly open that. If I open a new terminal and go to one dash marketing campaign agent, do ls latr, I can see that we do have the env file here. So let's quickly open that so we can say nvim env here. And now I can quickly put my Google API key right here. To do that, you need to go to aistudio.google.com and here you can go to get API key and then you can create a new API key key from right here. You need to select a project and then create it. Once you have that, you can quickly copy it. Now you can go back to your environment variable and also paste the value here. And now that we have our env file created, let's quickly go outside of the folder and then we can copy the file. So here we can say one dash dot env and here we can pass that to tools agent. Great. Now that we have done this, let's actually start coding. So we're going to go to our tools agent and actually copy what we have here inside this file, which is the init pie. And we're copying this from the marketing campaign agent to the tools agent. So 
let's quickly copy this let's go to the init pi inside tools agent and we're going to paste it here now we are going to go to the agent.python and we are going to start coding here so we're going to start importing the agent so here we can say google.adk.agents import agent then we can say from google.adk.tools and here we can import google underscore search just like this then we can say our root agent is equal to an agent and in here we can quickly go ahead and say first name name is going to be tools underscore agent then we can give it a description we can use what the copilot is saying and then we can say tools and in tools we are going to say google underscore search right then we can define the model as well so here we are going to say gemini 2.0 dash flash and then we are supposed to provide an instruction here so we are going to provide the instruction just like this and for the instruction we are going to say that you are a helpful assistant etc etc and we are also going to say that you can use the tools that we have specified so here we can say you are a helpful assistant that can use the following tools and in here we first say google underscore search and that's pretty much it right now that we have both of this created we are going to save the file and then we are going to go ahead and run adk web now we're going to go to our browser here and you can see on localhost 8000 we are running our adk web ui in here i can see both of my tools here so i can go here and then here i can ask it who wrote the angular cookbook and now it says position argument follows keyword argument agent.py so we have an error there okay i see the error here so i'm using my javascript skills here in python which doesn't of course work and i also need to remove these quotations from here as well now this looks much more like it and now we can save the file go back to the browser copy this again refresh open token streaming and paste it here and now you are going to see that it is giving us the response that the angular cookbook was written by mohammed Ayas. well what if i go back to my code here and then i remove this tool what would happen then now if i save the file and if i try to go and restart the adk web and then go to the browser refresh and then if i ask the same question let's see what happens here it says google search angular cookbook author it tries to use the tool but it doesn't have the capability so it doesn't really give us an answer and the reason for that is we can see still the instructions say that you can use the google search tool but that doesn't really exist so we need to make sure that the tools align with what the instructions say so in this case since it doesn't really provide the value we can essentially remove this and remove this as well and we're going to save this and we're going to restart adk web go to the browser copy this refresh and then ask the question again now in here it says based on my search result angle cookbook was written by matt milner now that's not accurate because it's not really using google search but now that we have looked into how we can use the tool we are going to change this back and we are going to put the google search back again but instead of google search now i want to show you how to write your own custom tool that your agent can use in this case we are going to say we have have a function that gives us the current date and time so here we can say get current date and time and here this is going to be a function and then this is going to return us a dictionary because this is important we always have to return the result back in a dictionary so we're going to just go ahead with this implementation and what i also want to do is not to have two different properties but rather one property that says date and time so date and time and we're going to use the same format here now one really important thing in a function as i said is you have to return a dictionary which means that it has to have a key that explains what it's returning and then a particular value what happens if if you just return this particular value and not in a dictionary format well google essentially turns it itself in a dictionary and i'm going to show you what it looks like if you go to the documentation you're going to see that the return value should always be dictionary so here if you scroll down on the documentation on the tools you can see that the return type must be a dictionary if you don't do that then it converts that into this particular dictionary where you have the result and then your value which you're returning from the function now the more descriptive this property is the easier it is for the large language model to essentially understand that and then execute things accordingly well now that we have our function created i'm going to actually quickly go ahead and replace this google search with get current date and time so let's quickly save that and we are also going to go ahead and we are going to remove this google search and we are going to rather say get current date and time and then we can say returns the current date and time let's quickly save this and we're gonna quickly restart the adk web and now if i go to my browser and if i copy this message quickly refresh it and then if i say who wrote the angular cookbook it's gonna say i don't have the capacity to do it but if you want the current date and time i can get it would you like me to do that and i say yes and then you'll see that it will now call this function here this is the function call here you have the response and here you have the output just as we saw so here you can see that we got the output right here there were no function calls here in this case then it goes ahead and calls the method in this particular event which is the second event right here so it does a function call then the next event is the function response as i said right here which essentially gets back the string and this is the response 
response that we should see as a return value and finally we have the text coming from the model and in here you can see that we have this date and time is and then we show it right here easy peasy right well let's actually try one more thing we're going to actually implement a tool that makes an api call so we're going to go ahead here and we are going to say dev get random user from random user me and then this is also going to be a dictionary and now you can see here that this function essentially makes an api call to random user dot me slash api and then returns the value in a json now we can also be more descriptive here and we can say returns a random user from the random user me api here we are also going to say returns the value or a dictionary with the users full name and then we can say email and phone number and that's pretty much it now we want to go here and we also want to check the value here so we can say something like user equals and here we essentially get the response json and then here we get the user info and then we make the full name email we take out the phone number as well and then we return it like this super nice now we're going to say this and we're going to go ahead down here and we're going to also add this value here so we can say get random user from random user me we are adding it as a tool and finally here also we are going to add that we have this get random user me from the api right here and here you can see it returns a random user from random user me api nice now i can save this i'm going to quickly go here and restart my adk web and now i can go to my browser and try it out so i'm going to quickly copy this question refresh and now you can see that we have the tools agent right here now if i say give me current time you can see that it gives me current time what if i say can i get a person and here you can see that it automatically calls the get Get random user from random user me function which is a tool and here you can see full name is this email is this and phone number is this exactly what we wanted super nice now as per the documentation of adk you can also use parameters as well for example you could specify that when we are getting the current date and time is there a specific format that we want to try and we can use that as an argument as well but i don't think that's really a good use case to show with this particular example and also there are some caveats of using arguments for example you need to be very descriptive so instead of using let's say a variable called c or an argument called c you need to say city because the agent development kit will look at or the large language model will look at your function its arguments and also the doc string as well that explains what the function does what the tool does and basically an understanding of what this tool does and then also things like you can't really have default values for example if i want to have this current date and time i can't really say that the default format is this format otherwise the user will pass it because this doesn't work at the moment with adk but you can try this on your own it is possible that in the future videos i might also cover that but having said that in this particular video we saw how to use a built-in tool from the agent development kit which was google search we also looked at how to build our own custom tool which was getting the current date and time and then also we used a tool that actually makes an api call well this makes everything so powerful because your agent is not right now bound to the data that it was trained on but it also can do much more using these function calls and we also are going to look into one of the future videos how to use agents as tool as well well having said that if you liked the video and found this useful press the thumbs up button smash it make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already and let me know in the comments what is it about the agent development kit that i should be covering next i already have a list of things to do but obviously i'm open to ideas but that said as always happy coding i'm gonna see you in the next video